So, so the first kind of uh, shocking thing to some people uh, that that uh, you need to realize is that we are we are all made of this uh, interesting kind of uh, stuff that has its own agendas. Uh, I don't have time to tell you about it today, but the reality is these things, uh, our, our cells can learn. They can um, actually have pretty complex problem solving capacities in different kinds of environments. And so we are uh, a, a very interesting construction of a, of a very unusual type of material with which we are just now starting to learn how to engineer. But at least, uh, you might think, uh, at least we are a true unified intelligence, right? So, so maybe you can call an ant colony some kind of collective intelligence, but, but we, have a, we have a brain where you know, we, we feel like a single unified uh, being, so, so, so at least we are a true unified intelligence. And in fact, um, uh, Rene Descartes uh, really liked the pineal gland because there's only one of them in the brain, and he thought that that's where uh, the, the, the human experience was, was centralized because, you know, there's no multiple, uh, multiple aspects of it. There's just one in the brain. But if he had had access to a microscope, he would have discovered that inside this pineal gland is all this stuff. It's a bunch of cells. And inside of each of those cells is all this stuff, okay? Uh, there isn't one of anything in the brain, and all of us are collective intelligences. We are all made of parts that do things. And the, and the real trick here, again, is that scaling story is to tell... Uh, a, a, a convincing, um, to give a convincing account of how it is that all these parts give rise to something that is a centralized, uh, that, that has the feeling of being a centralized, unified self. And so this is, this is what, what my group works on. Uh, now, it's interesting that Alan Turing, who is basically the, the father of modern computer science, um, he uh, was, was uh, very interested in, in machine intelligence and in uh, computation and, uh, and, and programmability and things like this. But what, and so, so everybody knows, knows that part. But one weird thing is that he also published this paper uh, called The Chemical Basis of Morphogenesis, which was basically an attempt to understand how the chemicals of an embryo organize into order from, the, from their initial disorder. Now, you might wonder why would a guy who's interested in computation and intelligence and, uh, and, and, and machine minds and things like that. Why, why would he be studying uh, the chemicals in an embryo? And I think that, although he didn't write about it, I think that um, Turing saw a very profound truth, which is that the process by which bodies come to be in this physical universe, right, by which your body was self-organized from a bunch of chemicals in the oocyte, is uh, very closely related in a profound way to the question of where minds come from. Right, so the origin of the self-assembly of your mind and of your body are very related stories, even though even though uh, they're treated by completely different uh, communities. So 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 uh, neuroscience uh, and and the you know and the behavioral sciences versus developmental biology, molecular biology, cell biology. Typically, those those folks do not think they're studying the same thing, and and I think they're studying exactly the same thing, just in different um, different components. So, so to, to, to uh, look a little further into where, where we come from, so this is a, a, uh, a, an embryonic blastoderm. So that's basically a flat um, sheet of uh, cells. So in the, in the beginning, what will happen is that the egg will get fertilized, it will divide, and then eventually uh, flatten out and give, and give rise to, at least in amniotes like us, it will give rise to a flat sheet of cells. So you can think about like a little, a little disc or a, uh, something like that. That's uh, just a couple cell layers thick. And so, so here's your disc. And so let's, let's just imagine there's about 50,000 cells at this point in this disc. And we look at it and we say, ah, there's an embryo, maybe a human embryo or a mouse embryo or something. Actually, mice have a different structure than this. They're kind of weird, but let's say rabbit. So human or rabbit or, or some other... Um, amniotes, uh, you look at that and you say, there's one embryo, but there's 50,000 cells. What are you actually counting when you say there's one embryo? Well, what you're counting is, uh, you're, you're really counting alignment. You're counting the fact that all of those cells are committed to the same story of what they're going to do in, uh, in, in anatomical space. They're all going to collaborate to build a very particular kind of of embryo. They are all connected together and they are all going to uh, cooperate to do one specific thing, which is to build that. That's what makes this an embryo. It, it, what makes this an embryo is that all of these cells are committed to the same plan. Um, that doesn't have to be the case. And so, so this is some work that, uh, that was first done in the 40s. Uh, I did it again in, when I was a grad student um, in the 96 or so. Uh, when you take a duck embryo and you uh, use a little needle to scratch some, uh, some um, some scratches into it like that, what you'll see is these, these little islands here for the next few hours before they rejoin again, each of these islands doesn't realize the other one is there. 
So what they do is they self-organize a new embryo. Each one of them thinks they're the only one, so they make an embryo. And when they do heal up, you end up with this kind of uh, conjoined twin or triplet. Um, you end up with a few, a few, a few uh, individual animals coming out of the same, uh, the same blastoderm. So, so the question of how many beings, how many selves are actually in an embryo is tricky. It's not fixed by the genetics. It's anywhere from zero to probably half a dozen or more, depending on what happens. The, the selves arise in this medium, this, the cellular blastoderm, uh, in real time uh, as, a, as a process of physiology. They are not, it's not hard-coded. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and what that means is that a self has to put itself together. It has to uh, figure out a border between itself and the outside world. So, so here's you know, three embryonic fields sitting there. Each of these cells has to decide, am I part of this one or am I part of that one or, or who am I part of? Um, and this kind of thing, this medium that can fragment or, uh, or come together to form some number of coherent individuals is not just for development, this happens in the brain as well. So we have uh, split brain patients that have a, um, a cut between their, uh, their two hemispheres that actually end up having, uh, you, you then find out that they have actually, in, in an important sense, there are two individuals uh, in there that have different opinions and so on. You can have lots of uh, dissociative identity disorders and, and various other phenomena that make it clear that it's, it's not so simple as the brain has one, uh, one uh, cognitive owner and the body has um, you know, one uh, is, is one is one embryo. It's actually not not that simple.